Hello everyone, I am going to give ultrasound images of 5 14 year old girls who have ha never had any menses that's called as primary amenorrhea. What's your findings and what's needed for the probable diagnosis? Two of them are typical spawn diagnosis and the other three need for need hormonal analysis and follow up for the proper final diagnosis. Here you can give the two spot diagnosis immediately and then blindly choose one of the three differential diagnoses I am giving here. Turner syndrome, constitutional delay of puberty and hypothyroidism. Okay, I am giving the images again. All of them are of 14 year old girls. Give the two spotters and the three blinders. We will go for the discussion, diagnosis and, and the discussion. First one, this is the spotter. Second one is the easier spotter. Third, fourth and fifth ones are difficult as spotters, but choose one of the three either Turner syndrome, constitutional delay or hypothyroidism. Now I am giving the answers. The first one is non-visualization of the uterus and non-visualization of the right kidney because only the left kidney is given with visualization of only the left UV junction which you can see in the suprapubic transverse scan with well visualization of both the ovaries. You can see both the ovaries are very well seen. So that's typical of type 2 mayer roketansky kusterhauser syndrome, MRKH. So why I am calling it as type 2 is because we have got the genitourinary anomaly like absence of one kidney. Whereas in type 1 MRKH, you won't have uh, another, another uh, genitourinary anomaly. You can see both the kidneys as well. Now we will go to the second case. Second one is visualization of the uterus and yes you can see bulky polycystic ovaries with endometrial thickness of 10 to 12 millimeter which is very typical of polycystic ovarian syndrome which can be uh, analyzed on uh, which can be confirmed by hormonal analysis and it was there. MRK syndrome and PCOS can be easily diagnosed on ultrasound but hormonal analysis is needed for the confirmation and we have to prognosticate with proper management. We will go to the third case which is visualization of 1 is to 1 size of uterus and cervix with non-visualization of both the ovaries in this transabdominal ultrasound and that was confirmed on MRI pelvis. And this uh, MRI images are not given which showed streaky ovaries giving the high suspicion of Turner syndrome. And this was confirmed by the karyotyping which showed mosaicism of 45 mono X with some 46 XY chromosomes which is called as Turner mosaicism. The fourth one you can see smaller size uterus with visualization of good ovarian follicles and the ultrasound was done transperineally because the uterus and the ovaries could not be assessed very well with the distended bladder and it was looking very thin. Hormonal analysis was correlative for prepubertal age group with family history of delayed menarche of her elder sister and also of her mother. After one and a half years, she had usual menarche and so the final diagnosis is constitutional delay of puberty. Now we will go to the last one, fifth one, which was also similar to fourth case showing smaller sized uterus with visualization of good ovarian follicles and here also the ultrasound was done transperineally because the uterus and the ovaries could not be assessed very well with the bladder distension. Hormonal analysis was correlative for pre prepubertal age group but here it was um, the hint was the TSH was elevated and it was referred to our endocrinologist and it was confirmed to be having as a hypothyroidism after further hormonal analysis and she had menarche after one year after um, conservative management. So the final diagnosis is juvenile hypothyroidism. Okay, finally, summarizing all the five cases of primary amenorrhea in 14 year old girls. One is MRKH syndrome, May Roketansky Kusterhauser syndrome with non visualization of the uterus with well visualization of both the ovaries. Second one is very typical and easy diagnosis of PCOS polycystic ovary syndrome showing well visualization of the uterus with bulky polycystic ovaries, which is typical. Third one, visualization of the uterus with non visualization of the ovaries which turned out to be Turner syndrome or psychism on karyotyping. And fourth and fifth ones showed visualization of the uterus and the ovaries corresponding to either late childhood or prepubertal age group. One turned out to be constitutional delay and the last one was due to juvenile hypothyroidism. 
ultrasound is the first and that's the superb modality of choice to diagnose primary and secondary amenorrhea as PCOS is now blooming exponentially in this decade, especially in our Indian subcontinent. Turner syndrome is one of the most common diagnoses of primary amenorrhea in the pubertal age group with high suspicion on ultrasound but not specific for the diagnosis as constitutional delay and endocrinological pathologies mimic almost the same and hence hormonal analysis and MRI sometimes may be needed and uh, uh, sometimes karyotyping also needed for the final diagnosis of Turner syndrome. And mosaicism nowadays is diagnosed more commonly due to more of karyotyping in these days. MRKH, May Rokitansky Kusterhaus syndrome is an easy diagnosis sonographically. But if you are interested to know about this MRKH syndrome, uh, I've got that in my channel. I'm including my quiz link, which also gives the proper discussion about the MRKH syndrome. Please go through that. Given discussed cases, nothing is in the DSD, means disorders of sexual differentiation category, which was called initially as ambiguous genitalia. Uh, for that, I am giving the link to our channel, which is the 24th quiz case. I think it will be really funny how I got the case. Please go through that. And uh, you can go through in your leisurely time. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And please forward this to your colleagues, friends and students. And I am eagerly waiting for your valuable comments. Bye-bye and take care. Thanks a lot.